Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Continuing to take a look at some of these top transfer portal classes, grade them out, give you guys our thoughts and opinions. And we're taking a look at the Florida Gators program that took a interesting transfer portal class. And I think it's indicative about what Billy Napier wants to do with this program, right? You bring in 12 transfers. I think you got some quality players, but Billy Napier, I think clearly taking the approach that he wants his guys from the 2023 and 2022 class to get some burn. Cause when you look at where Florida might be special, and this is not to say Florida Gator fans don't want to win games in 2023. Look, I'm a Michigan fan. I'm always rooting for Michigan to win a national championship every year. But I think a lot of Florida fans are seeing that the future is very, very bright. And Billy Napier is saying, we're not going to go take 25 veteran transfers to kind of stop gap and play them and maybe win seven, eight, nine games. We want to get some of these young guys involved so we can start competing for national championships in the next couple of years. So we're talking about that strategy a little bit now before we get into it again. Just want to say thank you to you guys. Uh, the Florida Gator fans, you guys have been awesome. Whether it's recruiting, whether it's transfer portal, super engaged, super active, super supportive of the fellas. So if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Dill, I'm going to kick this one off to you and let's have that discussion about Billy Napier keeping his eyes on the future a little bit. Yeah, and that is a, a, a little bit unique in terms of what Florida's doing. You see a lot of these first, second-year head coaches bringing yeah. in big, big transfer classes. I will say, you look at what Florida does in the high school recruiting ranks, they're quite a bit better and, and above where some of these programs are that are taking monster classes. Like, you look at what they did in 23, very good class. There looks like the 24 class probably can be a little better. The, so The 2023 class is so much better than I think gets get, gets given credit for. And you see in this narrative that oh, Billy Napier can't recruit in the SEC. Like, I think the Jaden Rashada like debacle kind of has clouded people's minds on Billy Napier and how he can recruit. But you take a look at that 2023 class. I love the players. This is a big class and a lot of really good players coming in. But, Dill, you made a good point. Like, you look at this 2024 class, and we'll be talking about it a lot this summer. That one could be really special. Yeah, and when you have that, you might as well just say, all right, well, let's play young guys. It's like, yeah. what's the point of bringing in guys who are older, experienced guys but are, are less talented and, and aren't coming from – again, like, at the end of the day, the cream of the crop in college football is not in the transfer portal for the most part. Yeah. There are some really, really good players – but at the end of the day, you still have to build it up through high school. And that's what Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State, like those teams are still going to recruit like like they do. And they're going to take a few guys in the portal. And yeah, the transfer portal is a way to supplement a roster. It's a, hey, we need some extra depth at the tackle position or at the cornerback position. All right, go in the transfer portal, get a guy who's a veteran dude that you can bring in for one or two years to kind of sure that position up. But I don't think it's a sustainable process to just take 20, like turn over your roster every year by 25, 30 guys. You see some programs do that. You don't see the top programs do that. Now, and I what, think what that's you what notice of what Billy Napier did is that he took kind of an older crop of transfers too. It wasn't, yeah. The guys he took were like a Taraja Mitchell, a Graham Mertz, RJ Moten. These are all guys like who are kind of at the end of their college career. And, yeah. and it's not, it wasn't like re recruiting the 2022 no. class or 2021 class. So he, Again, I do think he's putting his flag in the ground that he wants the bulk of his program to be guys who have been there since high school and developed through his system. Yeah, I, I agree. So taking a look at who they actually brought in, and you have to bring in a quarterback. I think almost every Florida Gator fan, you can't trot out Jack Miller, I don't think, or at least not have him, not give him any competition. And, I, yeah, okay, are there some other quarterbacks that I would have preferred, and I think a lot of Florida Gator fans would have said they would have preferred to have other than Graham Mertz. Yeah, I, I'm sure there is. But Graham Mertz, it's exactly what we were talking about. You're going to have Graham Mertz for a year, and then it's either Austin Simmons who might reclassify DJ Lagway. Maybe they go out and get another veteran guy next year in the portal. But they didn't want to take a young quarterback that's going to be playing for three years because their DJ Lagway, I think, is their guy. And so you take Graham Mertz, and I think he'll, he'll have you be competitive. I don't think he's going to go out and win an SEC championship. I don't think Billy Napier is really expecting that. But at the end of the day – 5,400 yards in the Big Ten, 36 touchdowns. He's played a lot of snaps. He's a very experienced dude. He's a quarterback that can win you games for the Florida Gators. Yeah, and, and I guess in, in fairness, Graham Mertz, he did play at Wisconsin, which was just an offense that Brutal. you pretty much saw what their administration and their AD thought about it when they fired Paul Christ, who honestly had a lot of success at Wisconsin, but he wasn't taking that program any further. He was very 
it's just a stale, stale run program. And Graham Mertz was right in the center of that playing 1950s football. And, and at the end of the day, that's hard to succeed in no it's matter who you are. And again, Graham Mertz is not the perfect quarterback. I think that is, if you're going to quibble with what Florida did this off season, that's probably the one place you can look is like, why not make a part or push at a Casey Thompson or some of these guys who have played a little bit better football in their college careers. But at the end of the day, it, it is what it is with Graham Mertz. It's it's a one year thing. It's it's kind of under in the in lab fairness, I think he fits what Florida wants to do decently well. You know they're gonna want to try to run the football. Graham Mertz is at his best when he's working off play action. So it's a decent fit. Another thing that a lot of Florida Gator fans have been commenting on is not getting aggressive in the wide receiver market in the transfer portal. So kind of a loaded group. And Florida didn't take a wide receiver. And why do you think that is? I think it goes back to what we talked about. I think they want a guy like Caleb Douglas from the 2022 class to play a lot. And I think they're really high on the, the three cats they brought in in the 2023 class, Andy Jean, Aiden Mizell, and Eugene Wilson. So they're kind of saying, hey, we want these younger guys to get burned as opposed to taking a, a solid transfer wide receiver that might catch for 600, 700 yards. Wide receiver, frankly, is a position where young guys who are really good yes. succeed kind of early. It isn't yeah. like offensive line, defensive line, yeah. where it's really rare to see – a high schooler come in and tear it up. Like if you're a yeah. good wide out and you can run and you can catch, hey, you can kind of play right away and be effective. And you're right. They bring in three really productive guys along with a good guy from 22. Like, what is the point of bringing in a guy to, to stop gap, just play him and, and see if it works. And that's, and there might be some growing pains. And I think a lot of Florida Gator fans have probably accepted that, but I think it'll be like when you get to the 2024 and 2025 season, and these guys are very experienced and talented that's when you see maybe these growing pains pay off a little bit. Like building back this Florida Gators program is not a six month, 12 month operation. I think it is a little bit more and you need a little bit more of a runway. One thing I do like what they did, and this is like, again, going back to, we can't just not take any transfers because we do need to be competitive in the 2023 season is beefing up the offensive line. I mean, you lost a lot of starters, whether it's the transfer portal, whether it's to the NFL draft, um, you go get some guys, Damian George, Micah Mizukua, um, from Baylor. And then a guy that I'm really high on that kind of bucks the trend of bringing those experienced guys is Keontae Goodwin, who was a former top 50 national recruit out of the 2022 class. He's young. The ceiling is so high for this kid because the athleticism for his size is absolutely insane. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a starting tackle this year for the Florida Gators. Yeah. And you look across, that is the one place they really did kind of hit hard was both the fronts. Both sides. Again, it, it is hard to bring in a crop of recruits and then expect to build up an offensive defensive line like that. It's just those positions typically do take longer to develop, it feels like. So he did do what they needed to do, I yeah. think, to be competitive this year. And again, it's not an SEC winning team, I don't think, right now, but it it shouldn't it won't be an embarrassing team either so that and, and that's kind of all you want to see and that's what you need because if you do want to keep that 2024 class intact you can't go three and nine and i don't think florida will go three and nine but okay six and six seven and five maybe eight and four if, if this team is a little better than we expect it to be and then this 2024 class i think kind of kicks off and, and you start winning some more games in 2024 and 2025 they needed to do something about the defensive line though like going back to our nfl draft scouting like, Gervon Dexter is just playing too much. They did not have any depth on that defensive line. So why was Gervon Dexter's film so inconsistent? Because he's a 315-pound dude playing way too many snaps. So you get two guys who I'm really high on, in Cameron Jackson and, and Caleb Banks, coming over from Memphis and Louisville, uh, respectively, that will add some depth to that class. And then you round out that defense. You take a guy in, in Mitchell Trujado who was – uh, again, maybe some potential there. Uh, a former highly coveted dude out of high school, Deuce Spurlock, obviously a Michigan kid. And then you add RJ Moten, who I think really fits perfectly where where they needed some help. Because you look at this safety room, and I think like a guy like Kamari Wilson, you're really high on from that 2022 class. Inexperienced, though. You lost two really, really good guys to the draft last year. RJ Moten's a dude that you know what you're going to get. He's going to play good football, and he's going to kind of add some experience to a young but very talented that's a, that's a big thing with what they kind of did on the defensive side is you look at two guys in rj moton and taraja mitchell who played at big time winning programs for the last two years at, or, or last part of their career at at ohio state and michigan i mean those are two guys who again that defense you still feel like it needs a culture change and it is it was really bad under dan mellon it got a little better under 
Napier, but it still feels like you're transitioning to a team that needs to yeah. be more physical, needs to just needs to tackle better, like do the basics and be kind of that SEC defense like they were back with the Brandon Spikes of the world when, when they were really, really good. And again, I think that these two players, you you got guys who played on really good defenses for parts of their college football careers. And now can they usher in and then start bring along these young guys who again are far more talented than both of them, but probably need kind of a culture shock in, in that. Florida. I'm telling you, I don't think there's a better culture shock in the game than Austin Armstrong. Uh, the, not many defensive coordinator hires that I'm better or higher on. I watched the spring game. Like that dude was running on three monsters. Uh, he was an absolute menace with the energy. And he's a guy that I think is going to recruit really well. He's already off to a phenomenal start on the defense side of the ball. Players are going to want to play for him, not only because this he's a young cat, but he is a, he loves football a ton of energy kind of reminds me of a young Brent Venables, but also like the defense it's, it's, you're going to see pressure. You're going to see a lot of pressure and you're going to see these athletes who are really talented kind of take it to offenses as opposed to play that bend, but don't break. They're going to be multiple formations, a lot of pressure. I think that's going to be a really appealing um, aspect of this defensive culture change that you're kind of talking about. So Again, this Florida Gators team, they're kind of similar to what we were talking about Penn State last year. Like, hey, this year, I don't, I'm, I don't want it to get lost that I'm saying Florida's going to be a bad team. I think they can win six, seven, eight games. That being said, if you're a Florida Gator fan and you're used to competing for SEC titles, give it two or three years because I, I do think that is kind of what Billy Napier has planned. At least that's what he and said. That's what he needs to be judged on at the end of the day. I feel like people are trying to get at him too quickly. It's like he is. Oh, I mean, you just coming from where he came from at Louisiana, like that's, that's a build-up program. I mean, that's, and that's kind of, I, I expect how he's approaching college football more so than like Lincoln Riley who came from a pre-built air program and, and all that. Yeah. And I just don't think Florida, I don't think the national media, I don't know if it's Florida Gator fans as much, but like, Dan Mullen left this roster in a bad spot. Like this, I, this program was not left in a very good spot with how Dan Mullen left this program. Uh, and so I, it's going to take some time. And I think Billy Napier's turning around is also a significant kind of style that he brings. That's maybe a little bit different as well. Florida Gator fans, just give it time. Let Billy Napier get his guys in. I, I do think that this program two to three years from now, I think we're going to be talking about them competing for SEC titles again, because that's kind of where they're focused on. Again, wanted to keep this one short. Went a little longer than we normally do for these transfer portal grades, but thought we had a little good discussion about this future of this Gators program. Again, if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. We appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you all later.